What will we find on Mount Roraima? What will we find on Mount Roraima? Yo, man, we going trekking on Mount Roraima, man. We going to find some drive, man. You coming with me, man? Get your waters. Get your copper vessels. Get your coppers, man. You going to have to burn it up. You going to have to get all the uh, pestilence out, man. What it do? I forgot I had these, man. You know what I mean? Forgot which uh, hardware shop I got them at. But, you know what I mean? Get you some of them, man. It might come in handy. Peace and power, man. I love y'all. As you see, man, as you see, we still rocking. We're keeping our vibrations flowing. We're keeping them flowing, man. Keep the water flowing. Keep the fire burning, man. Keep the water flowing, man. I hop to the tribe, man. I told y'all we're going to keep flowing with our vibration slogan. See, when you walk around, you know, with the vibe, it's a vibe to it. You know what I'm saying? When it's... When the straight up dodge your own hijacks, man, there's a vibe to it. Love to tie battle for the inspiration, man. She was in the ether one day. I mean, right now, tie battles on like episode 24, 25 of battle time, man, every Wednesday night. Six o'clock Pacific. Dodge your own hijacks. She just happened to say that one time, man. That's how the vibe slogans work, man. It just comes out. We put it, bang, bow, and now we can have a memory of it now we can have a living water now we can have you know something that every time we know what's in front of us and somebody else be having their own hijack be like stole up slow, slow up hold up dodge your own hijacks man and then you know we had to dodge your own damn hijacks but my little shorty came in the room was like oh dodge your own damn hijacks so yeah i'm gonna get some little kids bopped upside the head i don't want to do that i don't want to do that Dodge your own hijacks, man. Click the link below. Keep the water flowing. We got a few of these in, so get them while they hot. Keep the water flowing. Keep the fire burning. Drop nation. And don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. We still got. Who is Preston John? We vibing up, man. So, you know, no matter what you're rocking, you always are rocking. We always in searching for Preston John. Hosea 3 and 5. Israel shall return. And see Kawa, see Kawa, we got, we got, we got the OG. I mean, you know, all these got a purpose. There's always a moment to just be like, look, man, they can't tell us who we are. How could they tell us who we're not, man? One more, man, one more we got. Oh, man, you already know, man. Free Phineas. Free Phineas, man, dragons on the wall. Who is Preston John, man? You already know the OG. If they can't tell us who we are, they dang sure can't tell us who we're not, man. And we got the new drop hoodie still flock, you know, still still fire, still fire ready. So you already know you're repping Drop Nation, wherever you're flowing. I'm about to get in one of these hoodies, man. It's, you know what I mean? It's about to get that, about to get that LA chill, man. I hope y'all vibing up. I know the weather's been crazy. Everywhere you are, man. I'll be vibing. Oh, yeah, man. You already get, you got the snapbacks. You already know. Don't forget the snap beezies. All right. Don't forget the snap beezies. So get in the drop shop, man. Get your drop gear. We're going to keep the drop gear flowing. And again, man, you know what I'm saying? What we do here, man, obviously, we don't monetize YouTube or nothing like that. We don't want no contracts with nobody. We're in the ether. So how you support us? is, you know what I'm saying, rocking the vibe, you know, buy a shirt for somebody, you know, buy it as a gift, let them know, man, that you're rocking the vibration, and every time you're rocking them, it's something, you know, one, the shirt is a great quality, so so we make sure we get a quality that really, you know, connects to you, man, and you already know, man, when you're walking around, it's hot, the block is hot, man, put the hat, put the hat on, we got the beanies as well, the hoodies, and then, you know, we got all kind of stuff about the drop, man, so... You know, keep the water flowing for real, for real. And keep the tribe, you know what I'm saying? Let them know what time it is. Hit up the drop shop. Love to CJ Battle. He has beautiful crystals. Handcrafted, man. All right, get at Crystal James Jewelry. This is what the tribe is doing so that we can buy our land, so that we can build our land and do what we got to do. Be a dragon sponsor on the wall. A hop to the first three dragon sponsors, man. Yosef the Real. Man, uh, uh, Simon Johnson, Zion Train. So we got our first Copper Dragon sponsor, Silver Dragon sponsor, and Gold Dragon sponsor. 
And again, that's how you keep the water flowing for us. Like, again, we don't do no monetizing nowhere else. So we're building up our flow. And every dollar you put up is going to everybody dropping in the ether. You know what I mean? Starting next month, we're going to start having our ether, ether flow. And everyone's going to be getting, you know, a piece of everything that's been put up. So, so far, we got three dragon sponsors. That's one copper dragon. That's $25 a month. One silver dragon. That's 50 and One gold dragon. That's $100 a month, man. So, a high up to the family that stepped up, man. And come on, man. We got a dragon room we're building. You're going to see your names, your dragon on the wall. And we shout you out every show, man, support you. You get 50% off of all drop gear for being the dragon sponsor as well. But I know that's not why you do it, man. You do it because you want to. You know what I'm saying? You do it because you want to see us, you know, get to where we need to go and build up our land the way we need to build it, man. So keep doing that. Keep supporting J. Stu, K. Stu, the GoFummies, Paco's, King Oil. Support that, please, man. And the drop shop is beautiful. Uh, man, support Aqua V's GoFundMe, support, you know what I'm saying, the uh, emergency fund and all that, man. Keep us safe and, you know, make sure that we got a flow going. So when you want to support your tribe, you know how to do it. You know, I just have to make sure that you know. Sometimes people are like, I don't know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? The links are below. Get in the drop shop. Get the drop. And these slogans, man, do so much for our family to flow on, you know what I mean? So keep it coming, man, and, uh, you know. A hive, again, to the dragon sponsors on the wall. Copper, silver, gold, all pure water. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to keep it flowing for y'all because y'all showing us how important it is, you know what I'm saying, just to have our own our own flow, our own thing. You know what I mean? Not to be on YouTube all the time. When I come on YouTube, it's like it's, it's, it's a special event. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm live five or six hours a night, Monday through Friday. You know what I'm saying? The tribe is live. My voice is always, you know, it's, it's, it's been, <laughs> the fire has been breathing, man. The wah has been coming out, man, and the inspiration continues to flow. So this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it independently so that we don't got to depend on nobody else. They can't just yank the chain off of us and say, oh, you don't got no YouTube page. They can't yank the chain and say, oh, you know what I mean? There goes your monetary, you know what I'm saying, support, whatever the case is. We're building our own monetary support, you know what I mean? This is how you support it. This is what we got. Be a Dragon sponsor. Rock the drop. Support the family. You know what I'm saying? That's how you do it, and that's how you give back. For those that want to know, man, we've been doing this since 2014. Over here, man, on the radio. Right here, you know what I'm saying? Your face bone, and you've seen us grow, so you know what we're about. You know what we're going to continue to do. A hop to Freddie B. If you don't know by now, Freddie B., it's just, you know, one of the most phenomenal Drop Nation <laughs> supporters, man. Uh, always in the flow. He dropped that Cities of Gold on us, you know what I mean? Got us cracking in the in the Chronicles of Aka Core. Now the bro, you know, he, he dropped the uh, Cities of Gold Part 2. So we we going to dig more on that. For real, for real, probably after this, we're going to dig some more on that. Now the bro, man, he sent, he sent some more great additions, man, to our home Drop Library over here. This is a beautiful drop right here, man. Great illustrations. Man, you know, you got it, you got it. So we will be digging on, you know, maybe about a page or two out of this, man, today, but we're gonna be digging a lot more. So much dropping in, man. Love to Freddie B. Freddie B hit us with the Conquest of Peru. I mean, just look at this book. It's a classic. <laughs> look at this book. It's a classic, man. Let's see what we're talking about, man. Yeah, this is the con the history of the conquest. Look at this book, man. It is a class. I gotta be gentle with this book, man. And we, we gonna get, you know, we're gonna get into our Pizarro. We're gonna get some Pizarro going today. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get, you know, a little bit of this uh, Estebanico. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to get to the Aztecs and the Mayas. You know, we got one more. We got one more. You know, this, this drive right here, man, is love to Freddie B, man. We appreciate that. He also dropped some beautiful trinkets on us, man. I should have brought them out, man. Uh, like these cities of gold. 
dice, you know what I'm saying, from the uh, casino, the Cities of Gold Casino, man, uh, little puzzle pieces for the children, a Dragon Master Sword. Brother sent us a Dragon Master Sword, man. Freddie B got the drop, man. <laughs> the droppers are going crazy. Yeah, man. This is the journey of Coronado now. If you've been in the ether, you know Chef Candy has read, you know what I'm saying, almost all these letters that's that's you know that she had in the PDF we had. The bro sent us a hard copy, man. You know what I mean? So the family, you know, continues to look out. Journey of Coronado, translated by George Parker Winship. And this is gonna break down some more of that Estebanico Cities of Gold drop. So we're gonna be, you know, as we get into the Raramas, I appreciate y'all for supporting Rarama Part One. Love, you know, for all your comments. I do my best to, you know, address your comments live on the radio. So, you know, if you don't see me doing a lot of typing over here, it's because we're talking. We're talking. I, I'm not a big typer, but I, you know, we are putting it in, man. So, when we do get it, we get it live. So, get live if you want to get your response. You know, just get live. Get live, man. Yeah, we're going to get some of this. And notice the map, man. This is supposed to be Mexico, right? What does it say right there over Mexico? I N D I A. Yeah, man, that's India, man, right? India. <laughs> My naga, you in India, right? I N D I A. Hey, we're gonna get that. We're gonna get into it, man. So fall back. Love to Freddie B. Let's just get some of this, you know, rolling. Aha, for all the love and support, man. Get in the drop shop, click the link, and let's keep the water flowing. We're going right in. I want to start with the, uh, man, these pictures are amazing. You know, I would show y'all all these beautiful pictures. I mean, this is Mesoamerica, the Gulf of Capeshi. Capeshi. Look how beautiful. These preservations, man. Let's go. Let go. I want to talk flower wolves. I want to talk the flower wolves. And yeah, this mural right here is an actual mural on the wall, and it's images of soldiers at Banam Pak. At Banam Pak, spelled B O N A M P A K. And they show that fighting was at close quarters using spears. So, this is the Maya. This is the Aztec. Don't let these people, you know, come at you like, oh, why, why are you trying to jack our Native American culture? Why don't you Negroes go back to Africa? Tell them to go back to Africa. Because it's on your walls. I mean, it's on our walls. We talking all Mac. We talking Aztec. We talking all Mac. We talking Sylvanus, Toll, Texas, and we talking Flower Wars. Let's get it. Some Aztec military campaigns were planned in advance and carried out with the agreement of both sides as a testing ground on which warriors could capture prisoners for religious sacrifice. Now remember, we got the Kitsukoto drop, and it clearly said in multiple documents that Kitsukoto did not do no human sacrifices. He was one of the few that was against human sacrifices in terms of their priest kings and all that. So when we link it up with Joshua, this is what we're saying. They didn't do no human sacrifices. Now whoever they want to keep saying are either hijacks doing that or just straight up lies. Let's go. Such a battle was known as the War of Flowers, in reference to the magnificently dressed warriors who rounded up and carried home like a garland of blooms. Some scholars believe that the practice originated in the distant Mesoamerican past, but no examples have yet been found of Toltec or earlier wars conducted solely to capture live prisoners. Among the earliest known instances of this, what they call War of Flowers, is the war between the Mexica 
Tepanex and the Chalka, Chalka or Kalka, which began in 1376 and which is believed to have started as a, a flower wool. Let's get it. Buying food at the market in 1400s, the, the city states of the Triple Alliance conducted regular campaigns of this kind against Atlixco and other cities. Takelakelel, brother of Montezuma, the first, likened the gathering of victims through war to buying food at markets. Discussing plans for the inauguration of the great temple of Tenochtitlan and the constant need for a plentiful supply of sacrificial victims. Now this is by the 1400s or 1450 Montezuma, so this could be a hijack Montezuma. Dakel Lalel, or Montezuma's brother, declared that there was no actual need for their war god, Huatzilopochtli, to wait for an insult, diplomatic quarrel, or some other conventional reason to start a war. He should simply find and enter a convenient market for that food he needed. At this market, Talet Katlel, or Montezuma's brother, Montezuma the first in 1440, who who is the name I'm trying to pronounce. You say it, man. You say it, man. <laughs> you say. It. All right. So who was it? Lo poc to Lee. All right. And his army could gather victims like so, like so many tortillas. The market should be nearby because the flesh of distant people might not be to his liking. Rather than fighting in such distant realms as the lands of Huastex, the army should take their war to the conveniently situated cities of Atlico, to Toca, Tococ, and Cholula, and who is Zingo and Talaka. Alright, the war should also, or the war against local enemies, should not be decisive. Fighting must always continue to be easily renewed so that who would Zillow Pakli would have the victims for whom he hungered within within easy reach. Now this this, this hard to pronounce name, this who would Zil Lopokli, alright? This is also, you know, saying who Kitsukoto was warned against because he wanted human sacrifices. So when they say all oh, the Aztecs, the human, this is their god of war that wanted human sacrifices. Now, what god is this? You know, what I'm saying, remember, Genghis Khan conquered, you know, all this stuff, Preston John, all that stuff, 1200s, early 1200s. So that's over 200 years prior. So you got these other Khans and who they're calling god of war, the Inca, you know, some other connections like that. That we got to Mangu. Mangu being the grandson of Genghis Khan who comes over here, basically pops off this new wave of Inca. You know, he calls himself the child of the sun, but he was really referring to Genghis Khan, who's calling himself the sun. And now he's the child of the sun. So who's the sun referring to when they say, oh, the temple to the sun? They might just be talking about a temple to Genghis Khan. We just saying, we just saying. All right, man. I want to get to this one right here. 78. This is a crazy uh, emblem right there. Just check it out. You can almost see that Hebrew bot. The house, the bit, the bot. Now it says the Montezuma the first is celebrated as the father of empire who greatly expanded the Aztec lands. However, he did not begin significant campaigns of the distant conquest until 18 years after his coronation in 1440. He spent those first years building and strengthening allies, alliances within regions almost conquered by Tenochtitlan and fighting a long intermittent, intermittent war against the Chaco at the eastern lake of Lake Chaco, 
that ended up in victory in the mid 1450s. He also faced a series of devastating famines in the years 1450 to 1454. These ended presumably thanks to the God's blessing following the new fire ceremony over which the emperor presided at the close of the 52 year cycle, 1450, 1454, and the rebuilding work he began on the Great Pyramid in Tenochtitlan. So the ruler's first major campaign was into Huastec, Huastec, region of the Gulf of Mexico, an area rich in natural resources. So I'm just thinking like, you know, this is 1400s, we're putting it together with our investigation of the priest king, who was Preston John. And now you have this Montezuma, all right? And he's doing these war campaigns into other tribes in Mexico. Now we gotta keep Genghis Khan in mind, all right? Because this is, you know, one of those fillers. You know, it's gonna fill a lot of these gaps up. So the ruler's first campaign was into Hoastec region of the Gulf of Mexico, an area rich in natural resources. The army coped impressively with the logistical difficulties of the long march need, needed to take war to the northern coast of the used canny, canny tactics and pretending to retreat in order to lure forces into a trap. After a triumphant return to Tenochtitlan, the next move was to the southeast to capture the trading center of Coec. Tala Hoaka, Hoaka, all right, in the Forbidden Mountains, valleys of the mixed tech lands. All right, now these mixed tech, just like Aztec, all, right. all these techs, Toltec, all are connected to Toltecs, all are connected to some famous Toltecs, which is Solomon. All right, Solomon the Builder is Sylvanus to Texas, all right? Mixed tech, Israelites, Israelites, Israelites. So if we surf the way that these, you know, for the most part, you know, let's just put it, let's say the Aztecs, Toltecs, and mixed techs are all Israelite kingdoms or maybe all one, one and the same. Now they're being rolled up on in this instance if we surf that particular wave. I'm not saying for sure, we, you know, I know a little bit about a lot, and a lot about a little. We, we, we don't know much, so we're putting it together. Let's go. So after a triumphant return to the Tinoc all right, the next move was to the southeast to capture the trading center of Coex, Coex, Ta, Tala, Awaka. All right, this word right here. See that right there? Bang, bang, all right? You get it, you get it. Read it. In the forbidden mountain valleys of the Mixtec lands. All right, so you see it's, it's, it's con on con going on. Although the main attraction was the tribute that might be exacted from an area celebrated for its manuscript work. So this area is celebrated for manuscript work it's called the Forbidden Mountains. Oh, yeah. Trial for return, yes. It's called the Forbidden Mountain Valleys of the Mixtec Lands in Hawaka. All right, we're back to the Hawakas. Love the Karameo doing great work, you know, breaking down the Jaguar, the Panther, you know. Hawakas, let's get it. So as dust settled, a group of mixed tech chieftains agreed to pay tribute at the dependency of Tenochtitlan. Their ruler, Atanom, Atanom, was strangled and his relatives were taken into slavery. But in the usual Aztec procedure, the other local chiefs were permitted to remain in power. <laughs> so long as tribute was forthcoming, was forthcoming on the agreed schedule, the rewards for the Aztec victory included tribute of blankets, green stone beads, feathers, gold dust, red dye. Uh, man, ending the empire. These were the first of many famous victories for Montezuma. The first, what they call El Huicamina, 
The following year, he sent the army eastward to the town of Kazamalapan and afterwards to Ahul Zapan and Kuetaklan. Kuetaklan. Each time they returned in triumph, bearing tribute and plunder, having extended the might and influence of the empire and secured strategic settlements of trade routes. So if all this war campaigning is going on, as they say, in the 1400s, and Columbus gets here in 1492, I'm just going off their timeline, right? And all this is going, and, and what's this war for? You know what I'm saying? Is this, if this war ain't against the so-called white man in this Europe, da 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 If this is happening in the 1400s, you're talking about a tribal war. Now, what has it got to do with the Congress? What has it got to do with the tribes, with Israel? What has it got to do with Toltexas, with Israel the Third, with uh, the priest of Kitsakota, with Kitsakota himself? All this is connected to the forbidden histories of America. Get back in that series that's letting you know it's all one and the same. These, this Sylvanus, this Toltecs, these are his descendants that are going into Mexico or the Toltecs that are, you know, you know, setting up shop in Tenochtitlan and all that stuff. All of this goes back to King Arthur. All this goes back to Preston John. All this goes back to King David. All this goes back to Solomon, Moshe. All this is connected already in these lands and this is a continuation in the 1400s you know what i'm saying you already had the Genghis Khan invasion so the tribe on tribe takeover and all this sun sun talk remember mongu khan is calling Genghis Khan the sun he's saying i'm the child of the sun now they got the temple of the sun it's the same flow same flow this is the mixed text conquered by montezuma the first great army were celebrated for their metalwork in the Mistec Eagle's head of solid gold was intended to be worn as a lip ornament. So we putting it together. Remember, <laughs> remember the cross has already been, you know, carried indigenously so when they give you a cross and someone with a cross on their back it's already here my people choose your joshua and choose up choose up so yeah this is a great doc man i mean i want to keep going as you see i'm surfing the wave with you and i said let me bring this out man we'll get this last part and i'm gonna look at another document this is the royal power law and order man so you got the Mayan city of Palenque in northern Chiapas, Chiapas. Love to uh, Yosef the Real, you know, breaking down, continuing, studying on that Chiapanese, the Chiapas, Chiapanese, right? Chiapas, Chiapas, Chiapanese, all right? You got the Chinapas, China, and you got the Jia, 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 same sound, C-H-I-A, Chiapas. I'm saying this is the original Japan, man. The original China. All this stuff is already here. Chiapa. So you got the Chiapas. They even call the people of Chiapas the Chiapanese. The Chiapanese. Or the Chiapanese. Those that J is tricky, right? That J is tricky. Let me tell you. And yeah, man, they got the Temple of the Cross, Temple of the Foliated Cross, Temple of the Sun. Of course, they're calling this stuff this. Uh, contains stove panels, carved with images, hieroglyphs. This part's interesting right here. It says the Aztec ruler of each state of the city-states was understood to be both a promoter of fertility and a great warrior prince. His ritual names include Ina, Ita, Altepeto, mother and father of the city. Mother and father of the city, so they had an aspect of both. They had an aspect of the framer and the shaper, the connection, which goes back again to the, to the, uh, you know, what I'm saying, God of the sea, you know, God of the, 
God of the sky, God of the earth, you know, mama, framer, wisdom, connected to your shape or your high. Wow, you breathe it out, man. It's the breath. It's always the balance. So you're going to find that over and over again. Let me you know, see what this page is talking about here. They got the structures of power. Yeah, I mean, just, just check this. Check a couple of these. Little artifacts they got. It's a crazy book, man. Love the Freddie B, man. Oh man, look at this dude. Look at this dude. So, when they keep trying to tell you that you're not from here, and just because you're claiming your ancestry, your heritage, your birthright, it, it really does sicken your heart. You know what I'm saying? To hear, you know, I mean, that's just the latest, you know, some of the latest stuff. But, you know, it's all old news, you know what I mean? But, as soon as you wake up, either your own people are trying to tell you, oh, you're just running away from Africa. Did this dude just get off a boat? The melanated body is the ruddy, copper colored, so-called dark. I don't like using none of them English words. I don't like saying dark. That's just carries their English meaning, man. You didn't make up that English forked crap, you know what I mean? Black, dark, those aren't, it has a different vibration. You could try to put it, you know, but it's different than going from nigga to naga because the NG is the NG. You're just switching vowels up. But black, what's black, man? What's dark, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is that copper conduit. This is energy, frequency, and vibration. You see the ruddy? You see the red? You see the copper? It's the same. All that's the same. All that ruddy. Look at this. Look at this. Right? Look at this. This is ruddy copper. Right? This is the peak. So claim who you are. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, don't try to claim our Native American culture. You don't have you don't even know who built the mounds. You afraid to go to Mount Rorima because the dragons are going to attack your because <laughs> they ain't your dragons. Pretty soon, it just gets real silly and everybody's about to step back and be like, oh, okay. No, those are not our dragons popping up out of Hawaii right now. Dragon eggs just coming out of nowhere all over the place. Read Psalms 18. Read Psalms 18. That's all I got to say about that. And, you know, claiming who you are, it's just a natural process, a natural awakening, you know what I'm saying? Love the Freddie B. That's all you got to say. It's, it's nothing to argue about at this point. Someone trying to bring you to one land area, one mass, you like, I'm a Pacific goomba. You know, I'm from the Pacific. Matter of fact, and I know I'm in the East right now. So not only do I know I'm in the Pacific, but I know I'm in the East. I know my people came from the east, which is the Pacific. Let's go. So I want to jump right into it, man. The journey of Coronado, man. Love to Freddie B. Love to Chef Candy for, you know, basically reading almost every letter. And uh, these are sources just like Preston John, of the legend and the sources. Love to tie battle. It's full of these actual letters from Mendoza, you know what I mean, you know, different conquistadors at the time, different people that are with them. Yeah, it's a lot of drop, a lot of drop, a lot of drop going on. So we just talked about 14, 40, 50, 60, Montezuma, all that stuff. We're going to keep it going. Now we're in the early 1500s, mid 1500s. We're jumping right in there. All right. We know 
was the title. The Indian Uprising, right? Because these are some of the stories that you don't hear very often, you know what I'm saying? These are some of the stories you don't hear very often. You think that you just got here from Africa, right? So you came off the boats, there was no war, right? But then you learn about the Chickamauga, the Chickamauga, the Chickamauga. Same damn, in 1776, that's how it popped off. When you're learning about dragging canoe, which ain't nobody talking about. Was hopping in a canoe, disappearing in the sky. Man, I'm talking about Tecumseh. Love to hire Mark, breaking that down, man. So this is the Chickamauga, man. They, they, they're a different type of, they're a different breed of Cherokee. They're the ones that didn't want to sign no treaties, right? Now, let's go back. That's 1776. Let's connect it back. We in 1540. Let's go, the Indian Uprising. Of the arguments advanced by those who wished to hinder the expedition which Mendoza sent off under Coronado, none was urged more persistently than the claim that this undertaking will require all the men available for the protection of New Spain. It was suggested by all the parties to the litigation in Spain, was repeated by Cortez again and again, reappeared more than once during the vi visit or visita of 1547 and was the cause of the depositions, depositions taken at Compostela on February 26, 1540. These last show the real state of affairs. The men who were withdrawn constituted a great resource in case of danger they were worse than useless to the community when things were peaceful. All right, man. So some people were useless when it's peaceful, but now what happens when it turns up? The Indians of New Spain have been quite quiet since the death of De La Torre a few years ago, but signs of danger and increasing restlessness, unwilling obedience to the masters and in commendores Encomenderos and frequent gatherings have been noticed by many besides Cortez. There were reason enough to justify an Indian outbreak. An Indian outbreak. All right, so you, there was no laying down. Even before 1776 in the Chickamauga, there wasn't no laying down for the Naga, which is why you are the way you are today. They said, y'all Nagas don't really make good slaves. We're going to need to bring our slaves from somewhere else. Because you can't just put these Nagas in captivity on their own land. They just going to, they know the land too well. They're going to keep uprising. Let's start shipping them out of here somewhere else and start shipping in some other, you know, dark people. You know what I'm saying? So they can be slaves in a land that this, that's foreign to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, man. We good. We good. So there, there were reasons enough to justify an Indian outbreak, some of them abuses which dated from the time of Nuno de Guzman, but there is enough reason to suppose that the withdrawal of Cor Coronado's force following the irritation which was inevitable, inevitably causing, caused by the necessity of collecting a large food supply and many servants. So again, following the irritation which was inevitably caused by the necessity of collecting a food supply and many servants probably brought matters to a crisis. Onate, to whom the administration of New Galicia had been entrusted during the absence of his superior, began to prepare for the trouble which he foresaw almost as soon as Coronado was gone from the province. In April, he learned that two tribes had rebelled. Rebelled, man. Two tribes had rebelled and murdered one of their encomenderos or their commanders. Hijack, right? A force was sent to put down the revolt. The rebels requested a conference and then early morning surprised the camp, which was wholly unprepared for defense. Ten Spaniards, including the unwar unwary commander and nearly 200 native allies were killed. Nearly 200 native allies. 
So they put down even the homies that's from here that were allied with the hijack. It's the same situation as the treaty in the Chickamauga. They said, man, you're trying to ally with the hijack. I can't even do nothing for you. Oh, we're going to sign a, a treaty. We're going we're gonna to sign a treaty of peace and friendship so that whenever these so-called white people or Europeans or whoever got a war, we got to help them. So now they got a war with you. Now, now, now your own brothers is helping them. And what happens? Over 200 of them get put down by this uprising from the, from the real ones. All right, let's go. I'm trying to put it in a real, real plain, you know, real plain tent so we can really get this, man. The rebels requested a conference and then early the next morning surprised the camp, which was wholly unprepared for defense. Two Spaniards, including the unwary commander, and nearly 200 natives, allies were killed. Thus began the last and the fiercest struggle of the Indians of the New Spain against their European conquerors. The Mixed Time War, man. Look up the Mixed Time War, man. Hold up, hold up. There we go. Bow, bow. Read it, man. Pause it. The Mixed Time War. Let's go. Pause it. Get ahead of me, man. Pause it. Get ahead of me, man. Get ahead of me, man. Let's go. So Onate prepared to march against the victorious rebels as soon as the news of the disaster reached him. But when this was followed by additional information from the agents among the Indians showing how widespread were the allies of those who had begun the revolt and that the Indians throughout the province of New Galatia Galatia, right? New Galatia, like the Galatians. Come on, man. Were already in arms. He returned to Guadalajara. The defenses of this town were strengthened as much as possible, and the messengers were dispatched to Mexico for reinforcements. The viceroy sent some soldiers and supplies, but this force was not sufficient to prevent the Indians, the Negroes, who were animated by their recent successes, by their numbers, man. So you just tried up right quick, let's go. By the knowledge of the weak points, as well as of the strong ones and their oppressors, and who were guided by able leaders, possessing all the prestige of religious authority. So they were guided by the by the priest king, man. All right from attacking the frontier settlement and forcing the Spaniards to congregate in the larger towns. There was much fighting during the early summer of 1540 in which the settlers barely held their own. In August, the Adelantado Pedro de Alvarado sailed into the harbor of La Nata Natavidad. At the news of his arrival spread, requests were sent to him from many directions asking for help against the native. One of the most urgent came from those who were defending the town of purification and Alvarado was about to start to their assistance when a message from Mendoza changed his plans. The two men arranged for a personal interview at Terrapitio, Terrapitio in Mikoacan, Mikoacan, or Mishi, Meshi, Moshe. Meshioka, let's get it, where the estate of a relative afforded Alvarado a, a quasi-neutral territory after some, difficult, after some difficulties had been overcome. The terms of an alliance were signed by both parties November 21st, 1540. Each was to receive a small share in whatever had already been accomplished by the other, thus providing for any discoveries which might have rewarded Coronado's search before this time. In the future, all conquests and gains were to be divided equally. It was agreed that the expenses of equipping the fleet and the army should offset each other and all future expenses should be shared alike. Each partner was allowed to spend a thousand casalanos de, de minas yearly and all expenditure in, in excess of this sum required the consent of the other party. All accounts were to be balanced yearly and any surplus due from one to the other was to be paid at once under penalty of a fine, which was assured by the fact 
that half of it was to go to the Royal Treasury. Mendoza, all right, so we're gonna get back in that city to go. Let the Freddy B, let the Freddy B. And in the cartoon, you got Mendoza and you got Esteban Eagle, right? So let's go. Mendoza secured a half interest in the fleet of between nine to 12 vessels, which were then in the ports of Acapulco and Santiago de Colima. Cortez accused the Viceroy of driving a very sharp bargain in this, in this item, <laughs> declaring that Alvarado was forced to accept it because Mendoza was in the condition of which he would allow the ships to obtain provisions. Mendoza, as matters turned out, certainly had the best of the bargain, although in the end, it amounted to nothing. Whether this would be true if Alvarado had lived to prosecute his schemes in another possibility, Alvarado took his chances on the results of Coronado's conquest and in that very like, and, in, and it was very likely that the end of November, the discouraging news contained in Coronado's letter of August 3rd was not generally known as if had even reached, as it had even reached the visceral of the contract signed. Alvarado and Mendoza went to Mexico. All right, let's go. Where they passed the winter in perf perfecting agreements, arrangements for carrying out their plans. The cold weather moderated the fury of the Indian War somewhat without lessening the danger or the troubles of the settlers in New Galatia, all whom were now shut up in a few large towns. Alvarado turned to the Pacific coast in the spring of 1541. All right, pick it up with the Esteban story. Let's go. And as soon as Onate learned of this, he sent an urgent request for help, telling of the serious straits in which he had placed. The security of the province was essential to the successful prosecution of the plans of the new alliance. Alvarado immediately sent reinforcements to the different garrisons and at the head of the main force hastened to Guadalajara where he arrived on June 12, 1541. Onate had received reports from the native allies at the Spanish outposts and the Spanish outposts who were best acquainted with the situation and plans of the hostile Indians. Oh, now we hostile. Now we hostile. You look at the definition of dragon in 1828. And I think uh, number three it says a fierce or violent person. Oh, now we hostile. Now we hostile. Now we pull up. Free Phoenix. Now we hostile. You come over here, you jacking, you killing all oh, the hostile Indians. Now those are dragons on the wall. Those are dragoons. Let's go. Let's get the rest of this. Alvarado immediately sent reinforcements to the different garrisons and at the head of the main force hastened to Guadalajara when he arrived in June 12, 1541. Onata received reports from the native allies and the Spanish outposts who were best acquainted with the situation and plans of the hostile Indians, which led him to urge Alvarado to, de to delay the attack until he could be certain of success. An additional force had been promised for Mexico, but Alvarado felt that the glory and the booty would both be greater if secured unaided. So he said, nah, we don't need no help. They got greedy. They could have got help. He said, nah, man, we're going to get more if ain't nobody help us. If, if somebody come help me, I got to split the cut. Sometimes you need to take that cut. You know what I'm saying? What happened next? So an additional force had been promised, but Alvarado felt that the glory and the booty or the money would be greater if he, if secured unaided, so with no aid, with no assistance, scorning the advice of those who had 
been beaten by savages, he hastened to chastise the rebels. The campaign was a short one. On June 24th, Alvarado reached the fortified height of Nokislan, Nokislan, where he encouraged or encountered such a deluge of men and missiles. Men and missiles? By the, by the native people? He, he encountered such a deluge of men and missiles that he was not able to maintain his ground nor even to prevent the precipitate retreat at, of his soldiers. It was a terrible disaster, but one which reflected no discredit on Alvarado after the fighting began. The flight of the Spaniards continued. The flight, the flight, they was out of here, right? The hijack was on the run. Managa, you had the hijack on the run. You had him on the move. You had furniture moving around here, man. Furniture was moving around here. The flight of the Spaniards continued after the Indians. The Nagas had grown tired of the chase. It was then that the Adelantado tried to overtake his secretary, who had been one of the most eager to get away from the enemy. Alvarado was afoot, having dismounted in order to handle his men. He controlled the retreat more easily, but he also caught up. He had also he had almost caught up with the secretary when the latter spurred his jaded horse up a rocky hill. The animal tried to respond, fell, rolled backwards down the hill, crushed the Adelatando under him. Alvarado survived long enough to be carried to Guadalajara, Guadalajara and to make his will, dying on the 4th of July. <laughs> So when you celebrating 4th of July, are you celebrating just their independence in 1776 from Black Britain? Or are you celebrating this hijack who tried to kill everybody, but he was crushed by his own horse and got greedy, Alvarado. Alvarado survived long enough to be carried to Guadalajara and to make his will dying on the 4th of July. This disaster did not fully convince the viceroy of the seriousness of the situation. Fifty men had already started from Mexico, arriving in Guadalajara in July, where they increased the garrison to 85. They only had 85? Man, look, man. Nothing more was done by Mendoza after he heard of the death of Alvarado. The Indians, emboldened by the complete failure of their enemies, they got, man, they, they, they got a lot of confidence seeing the hijack fall. The Indians, emboldened by the complete failure of the enemies, renewed their efforts to drive the white men out of the land. Now, if the white man came in peace and wasn't jacking everybody and killing and stealing and murdering, raping, smashing babies on the side of rocks and throwing them off of cliffs, Throwing babies to Alec, if the hijack wasn't being such a hijack, you know, maybe it would go down different, I don't know, but in this case, the Indians emboldened by the complete failure of the enemies renewed their efforts to drive the white man out of the land. They attacked Guadalajara on September 28th and easily destroyed all except the chief buildings in the center of the city. So we should be celebrating September 28th, the destruction of the hijack in America. You know, this war should be celebrated. We should be feasting. You know, that's how we rock, you know what I mean? Instead of popping off fireworks for Alvarado on July 4th. Come on, man. Come on, man. A fierce assault against these defenses was repulsed only after a hard struggle, the miraculous appearance of Saint Iago on his white steed and leading his army of allies who blinded the idolatrous heathen <laughs> alone prevented the destruction of his faithful believers, according to the record of one contemporary chronicler. At least 
At last, Mendoza realized that the situation was critical. A force of 450 Spaniards was raised in addition to an auxiliary body of between 10,000 and 50,000 Aztec warriors. So remember, we have a possible hijack. Montezuma already, you know what I'm saying, love to Freddie B. Already rolling up on the mix, mix text. Already rolling up on the Toltecs, on, on the text, right? On the Sylvanus Toltecs, this is people. You had this Montezuma coming in in 14, you know, 1440, 56, and they rolling up on the cons. Now you got less than 100 years later, a force of 450 Spaniards was raised in addition to an auxiliary body of between 10,000 and 50,000 Aztec warriors. So 10,000 and 50,000 Aztecs were now fighting with 450 Spaniards. Gotta, you gotta meditate on, on, on how they do. Small numbers, they, they use small numbers and they control. That's pretty much the proportion of how they control us. Like when you really look at melanated, ruddy, all right, ruddy people, you everywhere, but they in small numbers, but they small numbers through manipulation, through the frequency war, control how many Aztecs? 50,000? 250 Spaniards control 50,000 Aztecs. That's what's going on today, my Naga. The same brain game, you know what I mean? The same brainwash, the same control, man. 450 Spaniards, excuse me. 450 Spaniards. In addition, they have 50,000 Aztecs, man. And what happens when the Aztecs wake up? The native chieftains were rendered loyal by ample promise of wealth and honor. I'm about to throw this, about to, about to chuck this. Freddie B, my bad, man. All right. So the reason why they had 50,000 Aztecs, the reason why 450 Spanish soldiers control these 50,000 Aztecs is because they were bought out with a promise. They took away real things. They took away the real wealth and power. And they promised them a promise of wealth and power. The same thing that's in your wallet, that dollar, that promissory note. It's a promise of wealth and power, but it's not ever real anything. Just paper, right? The native chieftains, the chiefs, the chiefs, man. So they got to the chiefs to control their people. They just, they didn't control 50,000 Aztecs literally. They controlled the chiefs and how they control the chiefs? Same as they do today with the promise of wealth and honors. They took away the real honor, gave them a promise of honor. And the warriors were granted for the first time permission to use horses and Spanish weapons. They got weapons, money, horses. With the help of these Indians, Mendoza eventually succeeded in destroying or reducing the revolted tribes. Now you saw Wakanda, ain't this the same thing? Oh. The real revolution gets crushed. He wants to put weapons in the hand of the people, let go. They say, nah, 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 we don't interfere. And they say, all right, we'll finally, we'll do something. We'll build an outreach school. We'll, we'll build a, here, we'll, we'll buy a building and we'll land our spaceship right here in the hood on the basketball court. So y'all can touch it. You think they're gonna let the Nagas ride around their spaceship? Will, will they ever have their own spaceship? Will they ever have their own vibranium? No, they got a vibranium outreach. And those leaders are now allied with the hijack, right? The Wakandan leaders are now working together 
with the Avengers, right? In your face, the real revolution's crushed, right? Because they got a promise of honor and power. And with the help of those hijacks, that dragon canoe led the Chickamauk, Chickamauga Cherokee broke off from the hijack. The same thing happened here, man. The ones that are doing these treaties in 1540. Mendoza eventually succeeded in destroying or reducing the revolted tribes. He crushed the rebellion with the help of who? With the help of these Indians, these traitors, these treacherous Templars, right? The campaign was a series, a series of fiercely contested struggles which culminated at the Mixtan Pinol, a strongly fortified height where the most bitter enemies of the Spanish conquerors had their headquarters. This place was surrendered during the Christmas holidays, and then Coronado returned in the autumn of 1542. The whole of New Spain was once more quiet. They got crushed with the help of who? The Indians that, that were rendered loyal by ample promise of wealth and honor. And now they got a Naga on Naga war that they've instigated that is in their favor. They got you fighting for them because you choose their wealth and power. The same thing as the Atlantis and Moose situation. You chose that wealth and power over real things. You chose materialistic shit over real things time and time again. They know what's going to happen. They know how to take you down. Give them materials. Take away their real things. Man, love to Freddie B. And remember, you in India, my people. I N D I A. See them ruddy copper people? Oh, look at this guy. Is he on your side? Or is he more rolling up on you? with those treaties of peace, of friendship. Look at that. Look at the brothers on their side. This is what took you down. Don't wake up today saying, white man, white man. All right, cool. Well, what about them? Because without them, without the 50,000 traders taking this ample promise, you know what I mean? These, are, these people weren't trading on their own tribes now. You know, I mean, 90, 98, 99%, these people were from other tribes. It's a tribal war. It's a confederacy, right? It's a frequency war. So we point that out. We know we are in India. And how do you know? How do you know? India superior. Yeah, man. Oh, where's China? Where's China? Where's China? Where's China? Where's China? <laughs> right over here, man. See, it's small. La China. La China. India. China. Japanese. 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 Chinapas. Love to Yosef the real. You got Chinapas, India, La China. The go. Because remember, China, you're only saying ch ch because someone's taught you to say it that way. But other places, the CH is Khan, Khan, or KH, Khan. So don't make the CH soft because you want to cover it up. Same thing with American. They say, oh, I'm an American, but it's spelled C A N. That's Khan. Ken is K I N or something. Ken, Khan. Khan? All right, Khan? Get your Khan, man. China is not China, it's Khan, Khan. Ken, Khan. Khan, Khan. Karakata. Let's go, man. Uh, let's just get this right quick. I had a bookmark for a reason, man. This is chapter three. One page. This is one page here. Chapter three. Let's get it right quick. Of how they killed the Negro Stephen at Cibola and Friar Marcos returned in flight. How they killed Stephen the Negro or Estebanico the Moor or as a more as a more 
Estebanico. They called him Steve, right? Steve the Negro. Read it. Read it. Get ahead of me. Get ahead of me. Get ahead of me. Let's go. Hold up, man. Got that LA. Got that LA kicking in, man. I'm gonna have to uh I'm gonna have to uh, fortify. I'm gonna have to drop hoodie it up. Oh, we gonna have to drop nation it up, baby. You know what I mean? Get these for the chilly days. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, oh, it's so cold in LA. Now, LA, be, you know, it's crazy because it, it'll just drop off on you. You know what I mean? You'll be like cool, and then you come out, be like cold, and you wonder why you're trying to stay healthy. And they won't let you stay healthy, man. Ooh. Let me get my CJ battle on. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Now we ready, man. We hoodied out. We drop nation now. Drop Nation now. We ready, man. We ready. Let's get it, man. I might need my reading glasses, man. Got to put my reading glasses on for this one, man. Let's go. Let go. All right, yeah, I can see good now, man. I can see good. Let's go, man. Of how they killed. <laughs> I'm just playing. I don't want to distract y'all, man. I don't want to distract y'all. We got, we got enough distractions. It's too many distractions. All right, so after Stephen had left the Friars, he thought he could get all the reputation and honor himself. So Stephen Esteban wanted all, all the honors, you know what I'm saying? Esteban, just like uh, Alvarado, you know what I mean? They wanted to make their mark. And that, it, that he should discover those settlements with such famous high houses. High houses, man. They found you in the high houses, man. He would be considered both bold and courageous. So he proceeded with the people who had followed him and attempted to cross the wilderness which lies between the country he had passed through and Cibola. All right, so he was so far ahead of the friars that when these reached the Kitalakala, which is on the edge of the wilderness, he was already at Cibola. Remember in the Forbidden Histories of America, Cibola means Kalelus. Kalelus means promised land. Now they're frustrated because they're looking for the promised land. They're looking for Kalelus and they can't find it. So they say, it's, it's nothing here. It's just a bunch of little houses. Hey, you ain't find no drop. If you ain't found no drop, don't don't be judging the spot. If you ain't found the drop, you can't judge the spot. So he's at the edge of the wilderness. He was already in Cibola or Kalelus or Promised Land, which is 80 leagues beyond and 200. It is 220 leagues from Kulia Khan to the edge of the wilderness and 80 across the desert, which makes 300 or perhaps 10 more or less. As I said, Stephen reached Cibola, loaded with a large quantity of turquoises. So Esteban, of course, they got him as like, you know, non, you know, you know what I'm saying, just a straight up hijack in uh, the cities of gold. But in reality, he's a Moor. He's, he's, he's Esteban the Moor. He's Stephen the Negro. But they don't have him as Stephen the Negro in the cartoon, right? So this is why you got to do your recon. So as I said, Stephen reached Ebola loaded with large quantities of turquoise. They had given him and some beautiful women whom the Indians who followed him and carried his things were taking with them and had given him. So hijack Estebanico, grown ass in the cartoon, he's a little kid. Grown ass Estebanico's jack and turquoises, which are copper. Turquoises are copper. And 
He has a bunch of women that these hijack Indians are giving him. Let's go. And some beautiful women who the Indians who followed him and carried his things were taken with them. So they were jacking women and giving them the Esteban. These had followed him from all the settlements he had passed, believing that under his protection, lies, he was lying to these ladies, right? Under your, under my protection, baby, you straight, you good, you with me. Believing that under his, under his protection, they could traverse the whole world without the danger, without any danger. But as the people in this country were more intelligent than those who followed Stephen, as the Banico, they lodged him in a little hut they had outside their village, and the older men and the governors heard his story and took steps to find out the reason he had come to that country. So they said, hold up, hijack. Go over there in that hut, man. We got, we got to talk and figure this, figure this shit out right quick, man, because you got a bunch of women, hijacks. You got a bunch of traitor-ass Indians, and you got a gang of our turquoises with you, man, so... I'm gonna need you to go fall back in that hut while we figure this out, man. So for three days, they made inquiries about him and held a council about it. The account which the Negro gave them of two white men who were following him sent by a great Lord. So he gave the same account that the Spanish was given saying that they, you know what I'm saying, that these white men were some angels or something like that, you know, sent by God. And, 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 and that he's rocking with them. And they just didn't buy the shit. It was like, man, you're crazy, man, because we know that there's a black king on the throne right now. King George, black King George was on the throne in, in 1751. Black King George was on the throne. 1751, black King George was on the throne. 1751, black King George was on the throne. So 1776, they trying to get they're trying to break away and get independence in 1776 from Black King George and the and the Moor, right? The Confederacy. But you have this Esteban Moor, this Azamore, Stephen the Negro, this Moabite, right? The account of which the Negro gave them of two white men who were following him, sent by a great lord who knew about the things in the sky and how these were coming to instruct them in divine matters. So these white people are coming, their gods coming to instruct you in divine matters. Made them think that he must be a spy. Oh, he's a hijack. For sure, for sure. For real, for real. All right. So they say, yeah, he must be a spy or a guide from some nations who wish to come and conquer them. They knew the drop, man. Esteban rolled up in Howie Cool. We're talking New Mexico. New Mexico. We're talking the Four Corners, and there ain't no New Mexico. All that is Judah, Utah territory. Cibola, Kalelis, Promised Land. They smarter than that, right? You come up here with your hijack women and turquoises and your hijack Indians saying that these white people are going to lead us in divine matters. Well, look around because that's what they're doing, right? White Jesus is who, who is, that's, that's what we grew up with. White Jesus, right? White Santa Claus, right? You got Christian Bale playing Moses in, in Exodus. Christian Bale, man. Russell Crowe playing Noah. Yeah, man. Same narrative, right? Ain't nothing new. So they said this guy must be a spy. This hijack Estebanico must be a spy or a guide from some nation who wish to come and conquer us. Because it seems to, to them unreasonable to say that the people were white in the country from which he came. How you gonna say, how, how you gonna say you come from Morocco in Africa and these white people are in control? That was just unreasonable. That's an unreasonable thing to accept as the bond. You thought these were some dumbasses, but they had to drop. 
it seemed to them unreasonable to say that the people were white in the country from which he came and that he was sent by them, he being black. <laughs> Besides these other reasons, say, how can this white person from anywhere be ruling you, man? That's unreasonable. See, you've been hijacked, so that's very reasonable to you. You're watching this video, you're like, what, what, what? We have white presidents and, you know, it's the Christian country and we're all Christians and white people seem to be leading us in divine matters all the time. You know, what, what, what? You're in the mind of a hijack. You've been invaded. Naga, wake up. Activate. Because it should be unreasonable to you. And the fact that you can reason with them lets you know you've been conquered. And it's up to you to defy this unreasonable behavior and nature that you're thinking in. This unreasonable lens that you're perceiving through. This is Hijack 101. It's unreasonable to say that the people were white in the country from which Esteban is from. Morocco, right? And that he was sent by them, these white people, he being black. That don't make no sense, man. That don't make no sense, man. Besides these other reasons, they thought it was hard of him to ask their, ask them for turquoises and women. So he got women and turquoises. He's asking for more women and turquoises from these pure people in Hawaku, Hawaku, New Mexico. Hawaku. Is it play play? They did this. <laughs> wait, wait. So, because these other reasons, they thought it was hard of him to ask them for turquoises and women, and so they decided to kill him. They said, nah, man, we hijacked free. And we, and we ain't gonna let you go so you can bring more people here, man. So, yeah, it's a wrap, man. So they did this, but they did not kill any of those who were with him. Although they catch some young fellows and let others, and let the others, about 60 people, return freely to their own country. So they, it was a fair one to them. They said, man, we're going to take this hijack out, but y'all can just let them know, man, we, we hijack free. As these who were badly sc scared were returning in flight, they happened to come up upon the friars like Marcos de uh, Deniza right? in the desert 60 leagues from Cibola and told them the sad news which frightened them so much that they would not even trust these folks who had been with the Negro. They were so afraid they didn't even want to even deal with Stephen's entourage. They said, well, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hijack 101 is gone. We can't rock with none of y'all no more. So, which frightened them so much that they would not even trust these folks who had been with the Negro. <laughs> Estebanico. But opened the packs they were carrying and gave away everything they had except the holy vestments for saying mass. So whatever really went down, however they killed him, it scared the shit out of these people and they gave up all their treasures and just kept their their holy vestments so that they can pray to their hijacked God. They returned from here by double marches. They ran. They ran from Hawiku. They ran from Cibola. We're talking the four corners. We're talking Udaw, Judah territory. They ran <laughs> without seeing any more of the country except what the Indians told them, man. This is the journey of Coronado Estebanico. And one more beautiful drop to make our dismount. <laughs> we'll make our dismount right here, man. Again, this is the uh, conquest of Peru. Freddie B, you hooked us up, man. And we weren't expecting it, man. So, you know, those are the moments, you know what I'm saying, when you're flowing in. You know, so you might have a moment or two. You might feel like, you know what I mean, like, 
you know what I'm saying? Is it getting through? You know what I'm saying? Is it, is it appreciated? Is it felt, man? And then <laughs> out of nowhere, man, you you get something, you know, like this, man. These beautiful books, all the great drop. You know, history of the conquest of Peru. We're going right into this little fine print, you know. All the pages kind of look regular, like this. And then you get into this little area, it's this little fine print. So I started reading a little fine print. And it got something to do with Pizarro. Something to do with Pizarro. You know, we're not going to get all of it, but, you know, I'm just going to get this top part right here. And we're going to do it for Freddie B for the dismount. Among the manuscripts for which I am indebted to the liter the liber liberality, right? the liberality of the illustrious Spanish scholar, the lamented Navarrete, the most remarkable in connection with his history is the work of Pedro Pizarro. So Pizarro also pops up in those episodes of Cities of Gold, right? another conquistador. But a single copy of this important document appears to have been preserved, the existence of what was little known till it came into the hands of Senor de Navarrete, though it did not escape the indefatigable researchers of Herrera, as is evident from the mention of several incidents, some of them having personal relations to Pedro Pizarro himself, which the Indians, history of the Indians, of the Indies could have derived through no other channel. Through no other channel. So Pizarro is a major, major player, and a lot is being channeled through Pizarro as well. And we'll just get this part right here. The manuscript has lately been given to the public as part of the inestimable collection of historical documents now in process at pu uh, publication at Madrid under auspices which we may trust will ensure its success as the printed work did not reach me till my present labors were far advanced i have preferred to rely on the manuscript copy for the brief remainder of my narrative as i had been compelled to do the previous portion of it let me just jump ahead right here it says petro pizarro's narr narrative covers the whole ground of the conquest from the date of the first expedition. So just like you got Coronado's expeditions. Love to Chef Candy for digging all that up to, you know, Freddie B, of course, man. You know, you got Pizarro's expedition. You got all these expeditions, right? The first part of the work was gathered from the testimony of others and, of course, cannot claim the distinction of rising to the highest class of evidence, but all, the, all that follows the return of Francis Pizarro from Castile, all in short, which constitutes the conquest of the country, may be said to be reported on his own observation as an eyewitness and an actor. This gives his narrative a value to which it could have no pretensions on the score of his literary execution. Pizarro was a soldier and as little as as little education probably as usually falls to those who have been trained from youth in this rough school. The most unpropitious in the world to both mental and moral progress. He had the good sense, moreover, not to aspire to an excellence which he could not reach. There is no ambition of fine writing in his chronicle. There is none of those affections of ornament which only make more glaring the beggarly condition of him who assumes them. His object was simply to tell the story of the conquest as he had seen it. He was to deal with facts, not with words, which he wisely left to those who came in the field after the laborers had quitted to garner up what they could at second hand. So I wanted to get that drop. So when we talk bizarro, Get into Pizarro, it's more cut and dry according to this particular source right here. You know, Pizarro is going to pretty much give you a skinny, no fat. Now, it don't mean it's going to be hijack free and pure water, all that, but it might, you know, cut to the chase, whether it's the gruesome, you know, real, you know, disturbing re reality of the genocide. I don't know. 
I want to dig further into Bizarro's joint. But it seems like he's going to give you more skinny and less fat, man. And there's more to this, man. I'll read this last part. His writings have been commended by some of his learned countrymen as showing as showing diligent diligent research and information. And some small little letters here, man. I'm trying, man. By showing diligent research and information, my own experience would not assign them a high rank as historical vouchers. They seem to me entitled to little praise, either for the accuracy or statements or the sagacity of their reflections, the spirit of cold indifference. The spirit of cold indifference. Cut and dry, right? Hijack 101, cold indifference. I mean, that pretty much describes the parasite, you know? They don't care, they, they just consume it. They just take it down. They're just spreading out, right? They're just destroying everything natural. It's cold indifference. What's happened to, to you and me, what's, what's happened to our people, is cold indifference. And other people have gone through cold indifference, you know, and all that. No one, but we are talking to our people. We're waking up. You know, so you you can go wake up wherever you you can go, dig on it and eat the rub. But I have to eat the rub for my tribe. So when you come to 42 to drop radio, when you come to 42 to drop, when you, when you're just digging on it, if it's you know what I'm saying, face to face, it's tribal, man. You dig, you know what I mean? Look, I get it. You get down, you do what you gotta do, but we have to build tribal. We have to build that, and if you're over here learning too, it's all good, you know what I mean? Just don't come asking for turquoises, and don't come asking for our women. We could, all right? All right, cool. Cold indifference, man, which they manifest to the sufferings of the natives is an odious feature for which there is less apology in a writer of the 17th century than in one of the primitive conquerors whose passions have been inflamed by long protracted hostility, man. <sighs> you dig? Man, love to Freddie B. Much a high, my bro, man, for just, you know what I'm saying, allowing us to vibrate with you today, for dropping us, you know what I'm saying, in the ether, man. Keep on keeping the water flowing to the tribe. These are the new looks. More are coming. Get these while they hot. We're just gonna keep switching them up and switching them out, man. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you suit it up for real. Make sure you got the real spill and the real feel. And feel good represent drop nation. Feel good knowing that you are the healing dude. When we say spread the frequency, spread the wave, we're just saying spread the vibration, awareness that you ain't just conscious anymore. That you got knocked out, all right? You got knocked out, you got boom, you got knocked out. You out, you wake up, oh, he's conscious, boss. Put the smelling salt on him, he's waking up. But is he aware? Is he aware of the hook? Or is he just conscious? He's just conscious, boss. Right. Conscious means that you ain't dead. Conscious means that you can, you know, sort of know where you're at. All right, but it don't mean that you can, you know, know what's popping, that, you know what I'm saying, be, be ready for, you know what I'm saying, whatever. You don't have the awareness. Do you want to ride in the passenger seat with somebody who's conscious or aware? The driver of your car, do you want them to be conscious or do you want them to have awareness? of 360 degrees, and that's what we strive for. All praise Hawa, allow Hawa for the opportunity to grow in the ether to, you know, put together our our our, our design, our wave, um, and just be able to trust that it's coming from within us and to know that we have something to, we have a perspective to compare things to. You know what I mean? We could read all these different books and different texts. I'm gonna get back in the OISB, look out for part two of Mount Rorema, Look out for Preston John. We're going to keep that going, you know, super fluid. And I'm going to be dropping a lot more, man. You know what I'm saying? Right over here, man. We've just been surfing the wave, man. We've been in the ether for almost six months, man. Five nights a week, we live. We have over 21, 22 tribal members dropping radio shows. 
So we launched over 20 something radio shows, man. And every dollar that you, you know what I'm saying, give as a sponsor goes to every one of those shows, you know what I'm saying? So if you a Gold Dragon sponsor, $100 a month, much or high, that 100 is getting split between 21, 22, 23 people. You know what I mean? And that's how it's gonna go flowing. So we're gonna get our sponsors up. Keep being Dragon sponsors, gold, silver, copper, man, it's all beautiful. And so much is coming, man, you know what I'm saying, to give back to all, all of you, man, for supporting, just keeping us flowing. It's the wave, it's exciting, it's the renewal. You shouldn't feel drained. Even if a lot's going on, you can't figure out something going on tomorrow, something this, you, you, you feel like you're in a rut. Man, keep going right now, man. Keep going, man. That's what we mean by keeping the water flowing. And that's what we mean by keeping the fire burning. And that's what we mean by dodging your own hijacks, man. And that's what we mean by Drop Nation, man. Keep on surfing the wave. Much a hop, da wa da. Drop 